we live in the city, I think the biggest thing is let's get out of the city. Let's let's you know enjoy nature and and understand how we must protect it because it's really one of the best gifts apart from our lives that has been given to us. Well said, Isabel. She's one of our greatest examples of a true ambassador is living the life, doing the little things. I think we'd love to hear from Mark as well. Mark, uh, we're going to relay um, Mars's question to you uh, being an ambassador. What does it mean uh, for you, sir? Well, over uh, the last, uh, I think, nine years that uh, Wills and I have been uh, WWF ambassadors, uh, we tried to leave relatively green life beforehand, but uh, through being ambassadors for WWF, we've learned so much more about how much more we can do. Um, uh, growing up uh, all over the world, you know, there are some, some basic things you, you learn, you know, like that, you know, switching lights off and everything. But uh, now with the advent of uh, uh, modern, well, more modern technologies, we can also um, make sure that the lights that we do leave on are more energy efficient, you know, such as first the CFLs and then it moved on to LEDs. Um, also, um, as uh, the ladies were saying, uh, when you travel, you can choose to be a more responsible tourist. Um, uh, if anyone you know knows me, they know that I travel a lot, uh, partly for work and then partly for enjoyment. So making sure that you uh, make environmentally friendly decisions or choices, whether it be bringing your own tumbler, uh, making sure you always bring a steel straw, make sure you refuse those plastic straws, make sure you bring your own reusable shopping bag, even when you travel, because you know you're at the beach and you, you need to get something from the Sari Sari or something. Again, you need to make sure that you always have that uh, have that with you. What I like seeing happening around uh, <clears throat> around the country now is that a lot of places that I'm going to are trying to be uh, proactive with um, uh, uh, defending the environment. I was in Coron recently, and uh, there was a local tour operator that is pushing for the reduction of uh, what a whole lot of challenges. Uh, sadly, there is a um, there is a law in the Philippines regarding combating this, whether it be um, manual uh, grinding of plastic so that it's easier to transport to uh, plastic recycling centers, or even producing, uh, whether it be eco bricks or, um, or craft goods from uh, the plastic pellets made from grinding uh, plastics. I think that things like this need to be implemented around the country uh, as solutions and uh, coordination with local governments and also, hopefully, uh, some sponsorship from private industries because as it is, it's been a it's been a problem that's been going on for decades, and uh, people have been talking about solutions. But uh, I think uh, if everyone can take a vested interest and look for solutions themselves and have a conversation with all the parties involved, then maybe we can all move towards uh, doing something to solve this issue. Fingers crossed. Mark Nelson, walking the walk clearly, and of course talking the talk. Thank you so much. I Yes. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes. Silang dalawa. <laughs> Am I Rose or? Oh yeah. And I'm Rose. Yes. You're Rose. <laughs> Darn it. Again. Let's well, I don't want to ship. ship. Let's go to the power ship. Yeah. Power ship. You've done that shot many times. Uh, I don't want to harp on this. Uh, great question, Mars. But uh, uh, my co-ambassadors have pretty much said what I do. But the day we were bestowed the WWF ambassador title. You know, I, I thought about it and I was like, wow, I'm, I'm an environmentalist now. You know, that's fantastic, that's great. I, I need to live up to this environmentalist moniker. But you know what? You see environmentalists in front of you. I'm looking out into the room and I see environmentalists in front of me. If you don't throw garbage out your car window when you're driving, you're an environmentalist. If you turn off your, your faucet when you're brushing your teeth, you're an environmentalist. If you put garbage in your pocket and wait for the proper place to throw refuse, you're an environmentalist. We are all environmentalists here, no matter how big or small your contribution, because every little bit helps. So that's what I'm going to leave. Um, you know, I'm embracing being an environmentalist, but guess what? You're an environmentalist too, because this is our earth. And uh, yeah, so we'll leave it at that. But I would love to hear another question from you guys. Go ahead. Mike is available. I think it's missing. There it is. Thank you. Hi, guys. Question for Tori DJ and our sister, uh, sir. Um, sir, who are you representing? Uh, Yucker, nice for DJ. I'm an ABS-CBN. Awesome. Thank you. 
Last year, we were able to save around 165 megawatts of electricity. Are we targeting more or expecting more this year? And the sa Visayas and Mindanao. So, why is Metro Manila important sa campaign na ito? And bakit dapat uh, mag-participate pa ang uh, mas madami mula dito sa Metro Manila? Thank you so much for your question. Yes, um, definitely would want, we would love to have see an increase in terms of uh, uh, electricity load uh, for this year. And in fact, what we're gonna do is like we've done in previous years, is we've, we've already started the ball rolling in discussions with DOE, and hopefully uh, our memorandum of agreement will be um, signed with them and approved, because we can only secure the information through the Department of Energy. Um, but of course, that's always dependent upon whether in fact people will have their within their heart to actually do what we, what we ask them to do or if they really uh, think that energy efficiency is something that's good. Um, one is the load also is because, the good thing is that it's not only because they've closed down their lights, but we've had more renewable energy. So actually, we're not actually just getting from fossil fuel the, the load, but more renewable energy uh, uh, development has, has gone up in the past two, three years, and especially for solar. So that's one of the things that we're seeing, that's why it seems that the load factor has gone down, but in fact, we're, we're using energy that doesn't have to get from the grid. So that's, that's, the, that's the good news about it. Um, the good thing also is that we're seeing that Visayas and Mindanao are now becoming more active. And I think that's, that's also, we would like to say that's a, a big success because that means we're not just like touching base with the, the Manila and Luzon part, but also because Visayas and and Mindanao are now seeing that they can too can participate in this global movement. Definitely would like to see more participation in Metro Manila. Uh, we know that there are around what, uh, 13 million, 12 to 13 million residents transient from the greater Metro Manila and, uh, and the national capital region because this is where the load center in terms of uh, energies is. And we want, we hopefully that they would also be uh, more encouraged to actually participate. Um, but it's really up to also you guys to help us get that word out. Um, we, WWF um, can just do what it can, but um, to be able to reach people, to get that information and encourage them, we really need the media to be able to be, to help us amplify that message. And hopefully amplify the message that it's not also only an energy that they can do something, but they definitely by connecting to the earth, they can do other things as well. Um, can I just uh, add a little bit uh, on that regarding uh, energy? Uh, Attorney mentioned uh, solar as uh, one of the renewable energy sources. Now, this is not just um, the, uh, the the large scale solar farms that are being put up, but uh, individuals can put up uh, solar panels on their homes as well. I've got uh, a six panel system at home at, at my place, and I've uh, reduced my energy bill by about 2,000 pesos with that. And uh, the good news is over the last uh, six months, uh, the cost of solar panels has, uh, uh, has been reduced greatly, I think by about like 30% or something. So it's becoming a lot more feasible for individuals to put these solar panels uh, on their homes. Uh, and uh, the I think you'll get uh, an ROI maybe in about five years and everything after that is gravy. Now, not only are you saving money in the, in the long term, but uh, you're also actually helping the load on the grid. Um, we are going through a bit of a, an energy crisis um, throughout the country. So the more that uh, people can supply their homes with their own energy through renewable sources like uh, solar panel, then there's less demand on the, uh, on the grid itself, on the system, and then hopefully they'll be less inclined to put up more dirty fuel kind of coal plants. Uh, so yes, um, if you have the means, then I, I highly suggest that you uh, look into putting uh, solar on your house. Well said. Well said. Well said. Well said, Martin. There you go. Yeah. Sir Joel, go ahead, please. Well, I think this is the main approach of Earth Hour. One, it's inclusive. It's not just WWF. It's for everybody. Uh, as mentioned by Gia, yes, it's important to discuss the issue of climate change, renewable energy, and, and, and what's happening right now. Uh, 
but the essence really is that after 10, 11 years, we've seen that the issues on the planet is getting deeper and wider. So is our constituency. It started with one city, now 187 cities, and down the line from the Philippines. We started in uh, CCP complex 10 years ago, and we're going back. And we're talking about water now. We're talking about plastics. And um, the overall principle, actually, is that uh, this is something that's not to be noble about it, na one hour lang, but it has to be something normal to us. So I think that's the message, that uh, it's symbolic, it's good, but we have to, to live it the whole 365 days. And that's the overall concept. And this is not just preaching to the choir, but this is for everybody. Lifestyle changes. We'd love to hear from another wonderful publication that would like to ask us a tough question, actually. We've been studying all night. We're so ready. Please. Wait, full sentences, Mark. Go. Why is the sky blue, though? All right, we're going to throw that back to you guys. You guys know that. Actually, yes, do we have... Come on, guys, don't be shy. We don't bite. <laughs> shy, me shy media. I love it. But, yes, I saw a hand go up. I'm going to try to reach over to you, or do you want to come on over here? Oh, there we go. There we go. Go ahead and state your name and your publication, please. Hello. <clears throat> I am Dec from the Philippine Star. I just wanted to ask uh, Attorney Gia. You said a while ago that biodiversity will be the focus of this year's Earth Hour activity. Can you please expound on that? Yes, uh, thank you for that question. As you, as you saw in the presentation, the strategic direction now is to focus on biodiversity. It's really getting people to connect Earth. Um, um, and the reason for that is, as I have explained, because um, the biodiversity loss that we've had in the past decade, not just the de past decades, um, is really tremendous. And um, and it's unfortunate because we are so blessed, not just as a country, but as a planet, with so much biodiversity from, from the fish and the uh, marine resources in the ocean to the birds that fly, in this, that fly and also the terrestrial, and as well as flora and fauna, for which we can actually, as human beings, be able to um, um, harness for also for our own good. Um, and we all, we've always said, said this that you know we need to preserve and conserve this for the future generation. Um, in the Philippines, uh, we have 50% endemic of all the species that have been identified in the country. 50% cannot be found in any country anywhere else. So that's if we lose that, we are actually losing so much of our heritage. And, and Earth are being a movement that has been able to drive people to do climate action. We want to be able to drive that to be able to preserve and conserve our biodiversity. So that's basically how the transition of the theme. Every year, Earth Hour has always had a theme. Um, you know, um, uh, if you remember, I will if you will. If you remember, you know, getting people to do something. Uh, and, and, um, we want to be able to use Earth Hour in itself also to look at the flip side coin of climate change, which is if climate change continues to happen, it will not just affect us, it will affect our ecosystems and the biodiversity that's in that ecosystem. Um, if, if I might add, a lot of you might be thinking, okay, biodiversity, so you're talking about like different animals, how does that affect us? I mean, like as, as humans, you know, okay, so a few more animals go missing, I mean, and the grand scale of things is not really going to affect us. Well, you're wrong, because um, uh, every animal has a, uh, um, a role on the planet. And so many of them, we don't realize what those roles are until they're gone. And then we see um, major changes happening in the environment. I mean, you say, okay, well, this fish species goes, whatever. But then that fish species might be uh, the, the prey or the food of a larger fish species. So then that fish species, you know, knocks out. And that, maybe that's something that we eat or the ocean or coral species, maybe um, a bird is gone, but that's what's used to propagate um, certain seedlings. I mean, if you look around the world, we've got a major crisis happening at the moment uh, with bee populations. Uh, bee populations declining around the planet, 
and when they go, then okay, they they're they're what pollinate you know so many plants and fruits and everything, and all of a sudden we're going to have our an entire agricultural system wiped out because of the declining uh, bee population. So even the the tiniest tiniest uh, loss of uh, biodiversity can have major major impacts that we don't even realize yet. We're only beginning to understand just how important so many of these things are. So with every loss of species can be a major issue for us further down the line. Everything is connected. Everything's connected. Ah, uh, Joel? Yeah. Let's go back to basics. Uh, biodiversity as mentioned. Uh, I'd like to follow on Isa's comment that we have to go out to nature because right now here, if you go 360 degrees, it's all cement. Okay, where does our water come from? You don't know. In, in the faucet, right? Where does the water from the faucet come from? Solid bottles. <laughs> of course. Glass bottles. Right? Glass bottle. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. You know that 98% of our water that comes out of our tap comes from Ipo watershed. Wow. In, and that's only in North Sagaray, Bulacan. That's about 30, 40 kilometers. In fact, no traffic, 30, 30 45 minutes from Fairview, Quezon City. Okay, yeah. You know that almost 60% of that watershed is degraded. That's biodiversity. So where do we get our water? Where do you get your food? From the grocery, SM, or wherever. <laughs> or farmer's market, or the palenque. No, you know. So we get our rice in Central Luzon. And if, you know, our fields are getting smaller because it's being developed. And this is all about biodiversity. So let's get back to nature. It's also very basic. And also part of Earth Hour is how do we consume and do no waste? You know that uh, in the Philippines alone, on the average, every meal, so we have to finish the food. You know, we waste two to three teaspoons of rice per meal. You know how much is that total in a year? 350 metric tons of rice. Wow. You know how much we have to import rice this year? So that every table, every you know Filipino would have rice three times a meal. 600 metric tons. So we cannot even, you know, uh, provide rice for the 104, 5 million Filipinos. So this is biodiversity, whether it's forests, whether it's the animals, whether it's uh, the watershed. So this is what Earth Hour is all about, you know. So uh, we're eating too much rice now. Anong diet chat? So anyway, so um, it, it's not just the iconic species like whale sharks. Of course, we have to. They have their own role in the whole ecosystem. But you know, there, this ecosystem is a one that also supplies food, water, and our being. So remember, it's not just one hour. It's beyond the hour. Beyond the Hour, yes, another slogan of ours as well, a, a few Earth Hours ago, right? So as uh, Mark said, yes, all species have a role, they're all very important, as Sir Joel and Miss Isa said, gotta get back into nature. Do we really have to save the e-beast though? I mean, come on, if we can, get, if we can pick one species, Especially flying, let's raise our flying. hand, yes, the flying ones, grab the flying. I'm sure they're wow. here for they something. Are they here for something? Yeah, yeah, what they were they here see. for. They're here raid and and bygone invented them. That's what they're here for. To make <laughs> bygone people rich. They're going to survive the nuclear winter. Jeez. Okay, sorry. Don't tell them that. We said destroy EPs. <laughs> sorry, media. Okay, another question. You guys are asking wonderful questions. Absolutely love them. Keep them coming. Yes.